Good morning all. Today I want to see how this thing works. This is this um, garden water timer device which opens and closes a valve allowing mains water to flow through it when it's in the on position and uh, shuts the water off of course when it's in the off position. Let's just listen to that go click. Now the funny thing about this is that the sound that this makes when it does go click, I'll put it near the camera's microphone. It sounds to me like something very lightweight is being moved quite a long distance. You can hear something traveling, but it's not something heavy duty. So the valve inside this unit is not going to be something like this radiator valve, which, uh, you know, you can see how it works fairly obviously. I'm just turning a thread and a, a plunger is rising up out of the uh, pipe. You can see that turning there because this is actually quite hard to turn. This couldn't be turned with that very lightweight sounding clunk. This would need something more like a servo motor. Also, this kind of valve has a tendency to get stuck at the end position. It takes quite a lot of force to bring it away from the end position and that happens at both ends. So this would be a hopeless valve to be electrically driven. And the same goes for this sort of valve. This is um, a quarter turn valve where you turn this knob a quarter turn. If I shove a torch up here, we can see how this is working. Let's get the torch on axis. There is a ball valve, which is literally a ball with a tunnel cut through it. And that just closes off or opens up. No, the valve inside here is something a bit clever. And uh, I spent several days after this came in racking my brain trying to design effectively a valve that would hold mains water pressure and that could be easily opened and closed with something as weak as a little three volt motor, for example. Because I've got a feeling that what's inside here is something as simple as this just a simple DC motor, obviously not with a, a fan on it. This came out of a, an air freshener. And I think that what happens is that it just gets energized, turns really only half a turn or something to move a lever or something like that, and then is de-energized. And then to switch it back off, it's energized the other way, turns again only half a turn or something like that, and pulls something the other way. And the reason I think that is because that's what it sounds like is happening. It's just a very feeble, weak sliding motion. So let's get this thing open. You have to bend these clips in and pull out the battery compartment. And behind there, there are two screws. Now, I've already taken these screws out and it doesn't release this whole central unit. So I've got a funny feeling that there are more screws behind this yellow plastic panel, which is a bit of a nuisance because that's going to have to be levered off. I'm sure it's just stuck on with double-sided ad adhesive, but that loosens it, but it doesn't pull out. So I think there's something under there. Now these knobs just pull off. They're just a push fit, but I think I'm going to have to lever that out with a knife. Right, this is thinner plastic than I thought it was going to be. So maybe if I just peel... Oh, that's made a mess of it. Peel the top down. Maybe I can see... I'm not sure about this knife. I might use the screwdriver. Uh, see the other screw under there. Right, I think I can see another screw. So I'm actually going to solve this by cutting this manky bit that I've created out. Not beautifully neatly. And uh, there's the screw hole. Now, will that, undoing that, release this module? Yeah, I've got a feeling it has. Ah, right, yes, that's coming out. Uh -huh. Oh, now I wasn't expecting gears. Mmm, how interesting. Also, that's rather nice to have a connector there. Now there's a crystal, which is probably uh, 32 kilohertz, 32768, so that dividing that down 
gives you one second pulses and that's how this is able to count out uh, minutes for the on time and hours for the um, the frequency. This doesn't have to have any knowledge of days of the week or days of the month or years or anything like that, just minutes and hours. So although I wasn't expecting um, a gearbox in there, I was right about there being an electric motor. So let's just turn that to on. It takes a few seconds for it to register that. Flashes three times and then drives the motor up to one end. Let's turn that off. Three flashes on here. And it drives the motor to the other end. So we know how that works. Let's unplug that motor now. Now there are more screws in here, so it looks like I can take this apart a bit further. Hmm. Now I never did actually work out in my head how this thing functions. And so in the end, I just gave up and looked at the Wikipedia article on solenoid operated valves. I'm going to undo all these screws. And it is quite complicated. Yeah, it's tight. And so it wasn't surprising that I couldn't actually design it in my own head. I think the design received a patent back in 1910 or something. Come on. Now I would have thought there's a seal behind this, so if I break the seal and it never works again, well, so be it. Right, this piece appears to be coming off. That holds the motor in. There's a, a motor retaining clamp there. Also, is that going to come out? There's something there. Ah, that moves in and out ever so slightly when it goes from one end to the other. It doesn't move much. It's just on a cam. There must be a cam inside there that's lifting that plunger in and out. It's quite heavily geared, isn't it? Interesting. Now, is that going to come out? Oh, the motor's come out. Excellent. But where is the business end of this? Is this going to come adrift? I'll keep waggling it until it does. So that comes out. There's a spring in there. Not a hugely uh, high pressure spring. There you come. And there is a small aperture through which this plunger, which you can see moves up and down as the gear turns, the plunger goes in and out of that hole. Now, from the um, Wikipedia article, which I'll show in a moment, I'm guessing that there's some sort of needle type valve thing which blocks off that hole. Yes, I think it either comes in there and goes out just up there or vice versa. And there's a little needle, which actually you can see you can just see that little white needle blocks off that hole and blocks off really that path through that hole and out of that hole or the other way around. I can't remember which way it is. And then in here, there is a diaphragm. Now I wonder if that will come out. Now I can just make out the other side of that diaphragm if I look down there. So what I'm thinking is, is whoops, knocked my light. If I put a little tool in there, Allen key and try and put some pressure on that. Yes, there we are. I might be able to ease this diaphragm out, but I don't really want to damage it. Otherwise this won't work. Let's have a play with that. Well, I've discovered that I can screw this vine hook into the central plastic of that diaphragm a little bit and pull on it, but I'm having trouble pulling it out. It doesn't seem to want to come. It's a very soft uh, rubber diaphragm with a lot of movement. 
And that is actually what opens and closes the valve, this movement, but it's not directly driven. It's a passive diaphragm and it's driven by a change in pressure when this little needle drops into that hole. Now I don't think I'm going to be able to get that out, but you can see the way that operates. It moves in and out and there is an inner hole which goes to one of these ports and then an outer hole which goes to the other port and it's that diaphragm that connects the inner hole to the outer hole. So water never comes beyond this diaphragm of course because you don't want it filling up inside here. That's how it works. Now you may be thinking Julian you've neglected the electronics bit. Yes I have rather because it's fairly obvious to me how this is going to work. This is just a, a microcontroller as I say with a, a one second uh, pulse clock and it just has an H bridge which can switch the motor first in one direction and the, then the other. Well, okay, this is an electronics channel, so I will take this out now, but then I'll return to the valve. And it's just occurred to me while removing this last screw that there, there are two uh, rotary switches here with multiple positions, so goodness knows what's going to happen when I get this last screw out, whether all the contacts of these rotary switches are going to fly across the room. Let's find out. Right, is this going to come out without causing me too much grief? Well, there are the rotary switches, which I'm just going to leave in place. Uh, the metal is actually anchored onto the plastic reasonably well. I'm just going to leave that as it is. And here's the circuit, and uh, yes, pretty much as I predicted. So here's the microcontroller. It's got no markings on it, which is a bit odd because, well, it's just going to be an generic ST or a PIC or something like that. Don't quite know why they want to take all the markings off. Uh, you can see the two 20 picofarad load capacitors which work in conjunction with the crystal. Uh, I can't see the frequency of that just at the moment. Have another look at that in a moment. And then there is an H bridge of uh, transistors here. I'm not quite sure why there are six. Possibly um, there are some PMPs and some NPNs. There are some Y2s there by the look, it, look of it, and some Y1s. Yes, it looks like these four are Y1s, and these are Y2s. Um, there's an LED which just pulses periodically. I could probably count the seconds between the pulses. It's probably going to be some round number of seconds, but that just pulses on and off. And that is it. So the motor is just driven for a period of time fully to one direction, and then driven fully in the other direction and just hits the end stop of the uh, of the gear arrangement of, of this thing and uh, sits there straining at the end of its travel. But yes, that's pretty straightforward electronics. And of course, the other thing I should have said is that lots and lots of the microcontrollers IO pins are simply routed to all these pads on the multi-way switches uh, so that the microcontroller can see the position of the two switches. So most of the I.O. is used up on this multiple switch arrangement. So that's the relatively straightforward uh, microcontroller section, the electronics section. Now back to the bit that I'm really enjoying, which is the uh, motor operated valve. Now I think I'm going to have to go to the Wikipedia article now so that we get an idea of exactly how this thing is working. I probably should take that out now. So here's the Wikipedia article on the solenoid valve and uh, the bit that explains how it works is this diagram here on the right. So I'll just get in a teeny bit closer. Now it took me a while to get my head around this but uh, I think this is basically how it works. Water comes in here under pressure and you'd think it would push that diaphragm away but there's a tiny hole in the diaphragm so it flows through that collects in this chamber behind and actually pushes the diaphragm down against these outlet ports. Now this is just one port, it's probably a circular ring around the central one. So in fact the water pressure is holding this valve closed. It seems rather counterintuitive but that's how it works. Now the solenoid operates this tiny little pin here. This is when it's closed 
And in the diagram below, you can see when it's open, the pin just moves a teeny bit out. That allows water trapped in this rear chamber here to flow out through the outlet pipe. Water flowing in through the hole in the diaphragm flows slower because the hole in the diaphragm is smaller than this exit hole, which has now been opened by the valve. So the diaphragm simply drifts that way. There's a very weak spring behind it, which is that little coil spring we saw. But now the water pressure of the mains inlet water can simply run round the uh, gap left by the fact that the diaphragm has moved away. That's how it works. It's extremely clever, but the solenoid, or in this case, the motor driven plunger operates on this tiny little needle valve on a very narrow pathway for water. So it doesn't need to be terribly powerful. Now, can we see that hole in the diaphragm that the article was referring to? Well, yes, we can. There it is. If I shine a torch in through the side, there is a little hole in the diaphragm. It's not in the center like the uh, diagram on Wikipedia showed it, but that's where the water uh, wheeze through to create the pressure in the back chamber, the back chamber being behind here somewhere. Uh, actually, no, the back chamber is what we're looking at. This is the, um, the back chamber, which is sealed sealed by this uh, section being plugged into it. Um, and then the back chamber has this exit route through that black hole and out through this uh, hole in the side there. So this is just a wonderfully elegant device. It's fantastic. Um, the passive diaphragm down in there, which lets the water flow through and the active um, plunger mechanism here. And you can even see the cam there. This gray gear wheel has an offset section right at the end and that lifts that pin in and out. It's absolutely wonderful. I love it. Now, the question is, will it all go back together again? I need that rubber ring to seal in there. So I need to push that in and then screw that down in place. Got to get the motor back in, of course, and all the other bits. Well, I put this back in and now I'm having to take it back out again because I forgot to put the uh, little spring in there. Where's the little spring gone? Ah! Where's the spring? Right, there's the spring. Now I have to put this down over the top of that, trying to get the spring to sit in its correct position. Right, let's try that. Now, how to avoid cross-threading a screw? If it doesn't feel like it's going in properly, that does. But if it doesn't, just wind it out, wait for it to click, and try again. Now that's tight. Yes, there was a secondary little click. No, that's not it. Big click. Yes, and that's gone back in. So that's how to avoid... <laughs> Wrong screwdriver. That's how to avoid cross-threading a screw. Right, that's all back in. Let's put the electronics back in. So plug this into the connector there, which is a bit too close to that uh, self-washered screw. It's kind of chewed the corner off it, but never mind, that's a minor thing. And then see whether this motor mechanism works. If I switch that to on, wait a few seconds. Yep, that went one way. Switch it to off. and it drives the other way. Okay, now to take it outside and see if it works. So I'm quite glad this has all gone back together um, without any problems because I really like this device. It was um, about $17 on eBay, so that's about £12. And I was looking in the shops the other day and they are about 25 for a basic one like this. So well worth buying it direct from China. Okay, just a slight bit of cosmetic modification there, really nothing much to get upset about. Let's put that in there. Um, now I'll put the cover on just for the moment. Actually I won't because I can't find it. Right, I have now found it. So that protects the unit from uh, water getting in. It's completely sealed like that. This is the attachment for my tap and this is the attachment for 
a hose pipe. Right, let's take it outside and uh, see if it uh, stops and starts the water flow. Well, it certainly seems to work in the off position, although my tap is leaking. Let me just come out a bit. So I think this thing which I bought is leaking because it's not making a good seal on the tap. I'm not sure how far I'm going to have to turn that to get it to seal. Uh, also, someone said, oh, that's really in the wrong orientation now. Someone suggested that I, that's going to let water out if I do that, isn't it? Um, tighten the gland nut up on the top of this tap, so I think I'll try that as well. Yes, that seems to work. The gland nut on the tap seems to be a little bit loose. Oh, that's too tight to turn now. So, off, on. Let's just nip that up. There might be a little washer in there which I could replace. So let's turn the tap on. This is still not making a good seal because this isn't fully seated. But anyway, this is all irrelevant. I'm uh, supposed to be testing this thing. So let's turn it on. Wait a few seconds. Yeah, oh God! I'm getting very wet. <laughs> yeah, that does work. But uh, my shoe is now completely soaked. <laughs> so let's try that again with me not directly in the line of fire. That's uh, it on. And that's working fine. Switch it off. Now, I don't know whether you heard that, there was a two-stage uh, switch-off. You could hear the solenoid being moved back into place to block off that rear chamber. And then the diaphragm closed. I'll just do it again. And off. It sort of went clunk, squish as the uh, motor turned round and then the diaphragm closed all on its own because of accumulated pressure um, into that rear chamber. Anyway, all fascinating stuff. It works absolutely beautifully. I'm very pleased with this device and uh, that's the teardown. So, cheerio.